praise the Lord. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is your program, Living by the Word. And of course, I'm yours truly, Pastor Eloise Hines of Destiny Empowerment Global Ministries. We just want to thank God for what he's doing with us at that ministry. We want to thank God for all of you who continue to support and pray for us. We want to let you know that we are currently fellowshipping at the Shaw Park Complex, level 2, on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. We have our Bible study time Tuesdays at 6 p.m. We have youth at 5.30 p.m. and our prayer time as well as on Fridays at 6.30 p.m. at the Lambo Multipurpose Complex. Of course, feel free to fellowship with us and come and see what God is doing with us. This month, we are focusing on the, on the theme, enough talk, you know, time for action talk done time for action and you know god has just been giving us some tremendous messages and god has just been showing up and speaking and releasing his word in and through us and we are excited about what god is doing just to let you know we as it relates to our young people our destiny youth international ministries they are going to be having a session called a rap session so look out for that rap session on the Monday the 29th of July, yes, that's going to be um, Monday the 29th, whenever you're hearing this program, right? And they're going to be just talking among themselves as young people about matters that are affecting youth and finding godly and biblical solutions for it. They also have an important and a um, powerful, powerful night that's coming up on Friday the 2nd of August, where they're going to have a night of encounter ministering to other young people feel free to get in touch with us for that information and continue to pray for us for god to really be glorified in and through the work that he's given us to do now there are a lot of other things that's going to be coming up stay tuned of course we also have a program life empowerment series amen let's talk life with me and we're going to be on air Two Thursdays on Facebook, look for us. Two Thursdays on Facebook, look for it on my page, where we're just going to be talking about issues in life, right? We have coming up um, a, a series, uh, one of the sessions talking about investing and all of that. So stay tuned for what God is doing with us at Destiny Empowerment Global Ministries. Amen. Father, we thank you for your people. We thank you for blessing those who will hear. We thank you for the ears that are opened and receptive to what you would say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. I am on part two of the topic, dealing with behold, I give you power. God has given us a work to do in the earth as his church. And for us to accomplish and fulfill this work, we need power. <clears throat> we need power. And God knows that we cannot do this work with power, without power. I said last time that every organization, it doesn't matter what, right? Every single organization or any person who has an assignment to do must have one, the authority to carry out that assignment and must have the power or ability to do it. So you must be authorized and outside of being authorized, you must have ability. God has given us a mandate to go to the uttermost parts of the earth, to disciple nations. And for us to be able to do that, we need the power of God. Somebody say power. One of the reasons why we have not been successful in discipling the nations in, in terms of getting persons saved and receiving the gospel is because we do it in our own strength and ability and not in the power of God. That's why we are having all these activities and that's why we're having all these, all these things that are going on, but it's not yielding the fruit that God expects it to yield because we are not depending on the power of God. I want to show us today that as the church of the living God, we cannot go into, ah uh, God, the Bible says, into a strong man's house and spoil his goods unless we first bind that strong man. Matthew 12, 28. Jesus said you cannot go into a strong man's house and spoil his goods 
unless you bind that strong man. Jesus said, when a strong man keeps his house, then his goods are secure. But when a stronger man comes, what he does, he, he takes away the armor in which he trusts, and then he ransacks his house. You cannot go into the, dark, the, the, the kingdom of darkness territory. You cannot go and just, you know, pull people as it were from the powers of darkness uh, and have them translated into the kingdom of God's dear son uh, without power and a power that is more forceful and stronger than the kingdom of darkness power. I saw, oh my God, I, I, I said last week, quoting Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, he said he used to deal in the occult. And he used to deal up with power and he refused to come to the church because he was functioning in a greater power than what he saw manifested in the church. And this is what he said. He said, you don't witness and preach good to win an atheist. They must see power. A good lawyer wins his case in court, not by arguments, but by backing it up with evidence. The gospel must have evidence and the evidence of the gospel is signs wonders and miracles he said jesus preached taught and cast out devils if we preach and teach and don't cast out devils that is not the full gospel the gospel is not good preaching it is power I want us to understand. That's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 to 5, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration, come on somebody, demonstration of the spirit spirit and of power demonstration means i need to show you what i am saying it's not sufficient to just talk it i need to manifest i need you not just to hear what i'm saying i need you to see what i'm saying so i'm going to talk and i'm going to demonstrate he says my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. If there is ever a time we need faith in the power of God, it is now. If ever a time we need to see God show up hey, in his power and his glory, it is now. If there's ever a time that people are looking for signs and wonders and evidence of this God that they so ill speak and make a mockery of, it is now. People are losing hope. And mind you, people will lose hope one way or the other. But I'm saying to us, Church of the Living God, it's time we arise in the power of God that the faith of our congregations and our members will not be in any man's wisdom. It will not be in any man's words or how eloquent he can speak. The faith of our people, my God, eh, needs to stand in the power of God. I have been saying in my circle of influence, why is it when church people, I'm saying this, when church people get sick, that's the time they stay home. Why is it when church people have problems, that's the day they stay home, they will call and say, Pastor, I'm not coming because my foot hurting, my back hurting me. Why is it, ah oh God, that's not the time that they are running into the gathering of the saints, knowing that the power of God will be there to heal, to deliver, to strengthen them. Why? Because sometimes it is we have preached them happy. And the day they are not happy, they stay home. They go to the doctor. They have a problem because their faith has been in our words, our wisdom words, our eloquence, oh, all the, the thrills and frills and rhymes. And it has not been in the power of God. 
Father, help us. I want to show you from scripture that this mission that we as the church have been given to do, it takes power to get it done. Amen, somebody. I want to jump to Jesus himself. Last week I touched on Paul. I may touch on him again. But I want to show you Jesus himself. When Jesus was in the earth, how did Jesus take this message of the gospel that he has now given to us? How did Jesus function? The Bible tells us in John chapter 14 verse 12, Jesus said to his disciples, he says, greater works than these than what I have done, you will do because I am going to my father. Theologians have discussed what the greater works is and what, but if Jesus has said, there is a work that I have done and compared to what I have done, you are going to do greater. Our oh God in capacity, greater in measure, did Jesus stutter? Did Jesus really mean that his disciples are going to do greater than he has done? Let's look at eight, Luke chapter 8 verse, from verse 1. Let's read a couple passages and see how Jesus functioned when he was in the earth. And it says it came to pass afterwards that Jesus went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. So what I'm saying to you is that as Jesus went, he had his disciples with him showing them how to do the work. Come on, because he said greater works you're going to do. Jesus had these 12 with him as he went about. The Bible says he was preaching and showing them. The 12 were there. And I point this out to show you what it is Jesus exposed the 12 disciples to. What it is he was setting an example and a template for them to do. Because that is what he came to do. He said, I've come to make you fishers of men. I've come to show you how to catch men, how to minister to men, that my God, there's going to be a harvest of souls. He says, and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmity, Mary called Magdalena, out of whom went seven devils. So the first thing that is pointed out in this passage is that there was evidence of Jesus' power over the demonic realm. My God. The Bible points out, Luke points out for us that there were certain women which had been healed who Jesus had already cast seven spirits out of her, seven demons. The disciples were witness to that and she was walking among them as a living testimony of his power. She was there healed delivered in her right mind. There was no doubt or question of the power of God over the devils. Verse 22 of Luke, it says, and it came to pass. I'm talking about how Jesus functioned in power. Yes, on a certain day, he went into a ship with his disciples. He said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose, rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, were, and they being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and waters, and they obeyed him. Somebody said, Power. Jesus said, Where's your faith? Why are you behaving as though, you know, all is lost? <laughs> Jesus woke from sleep. My God, if the water is coming into the boat, uh, God, it's not like the, the, the boat we have, the APT, James and others. These are, are fishermen in their boats. So water is coming in. Jesus is asleep. Jesus gets up and says, hey, where's your faith? Don't you know that, that this is not something to worry about? Don't you know this is something that I have power over? Where is your faith? 
Maybe he's even saying to them, don't you know this is something you should exercise power over? Where is your faith to calm the seas? And where is your faith to know that I am here, I have power over the storms? Hey, ah, oh my God. Ah, oh my God. Where is your faith? That when the storms of life are coming, uh, you begin to think that God wants you to perish. Uh, you begin to think that God, the word you have spoken over my life, uh, it will not come to pass. Uh, because God, I know you gave me a word, uh, but God, now the storms are coming. Uh, the situation is getting worse. Uh, but God, uh, where are you? Don't you care that I am going to perish? And God is asking many of us, where is your faith? If I am in the, the boat with you, if I am in the storm with you, you cannot drown, you cannot die. I'm saying to you, my brothers, my sisters, make sure Jesus is in the boat with you. Make sure the boat of life, my God, that you're traveling in, you have not left Jesus behind. You have not left him on the shore. Make sure that Jesus is with you in that boat. Even if you think he's sleeping, my God, at the opportune time, he will get up and calm those storms in your life in the name of Jesus. He's showing them power. So it's not just power over demons. He's showing them I have power over nature because my God, he is the creator. The winds and the waves obey the voice of their master and he was demonstrating power to them. They were amazed. They said, what manner of man is this? For he commanded winds and waters, the elements. It means that they have voice to hear. My God, the winds and the waters they obey him. That is power. And then verse number 26 says, They arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wore no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice uh, said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, thou son of God most high? I beseech you, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. And he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. This man, ah my God, poor fella. Unclean spirit have the man's life in torment. My God, so he had to be kept bound with chains and fetters and he break them. My goodness, the devil had him in torment, living below what God had called him to live in. But Jesus commanded that unclean spirit. My God, that the people could not keep him. My God, chains could not control him. And Jesus comes and says, come out. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. I, I dare put it to you, church, that there are many people, my God, that this is the diagnosis of their problem. This is the diagnosis of their problem. The enemy has made an inroad into their lives. And the behavior that we are seeing is not even they responsible for it. My God, and if we would have eyes to see and understand how wicked our God this enemy is. And understand how rampant the works of darkness is in our society. We would crave and function the authority and power to do just what Jesus has done. He said, many had entered into him and they besought him he would, that, they would, that he would not command them to go into the deep. And there was a herd of many swines feeding in the mountain. They besought him that he would suffer them to enter and he tell them, hey, he suffered them to go. Then went the devil out, devils out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran violent down a steep place into the lake and they were choked. Verse 38 says, They also with sight told them 
what means he was possessed of the devil, that he was healed. Power to cast out devils because there are many people possessed and oppressed. Oh, and unless there is a greater power to drive out devils and drive out demons, persons would not be delivered and walk in the freedom and abundant life. My God, that Jesus has come to give. If we going into the highways and byways church to see men and women translated from the powers of darkness, it will take power. Hear what I'm saying? Ah, my God. Verse number 41 of Luke. I'm just showing you Jesus how he functioned. And it says, Behold, ah, God, there came a man named Jairus. That same Luke 8, 41. He was a ruler of the synagogue. He fell on at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. That's when also the woman with the issue of blood that had spent all her money on physicians and could not get her healing. She came behind and touched the borders of his garment. The Bible says immediately her issue of blood dried up and Jesus turned and said, who touched me? Because he felt virtue had gone out of him. Ah God, Jesus was walking with such power power that this woman just stretched forth her hand and touched the helm of his garment and draw out her healing oh my goodness my goodness this is the state of the people we are trying to get to sickness has raptured and taken a hold of them for years 12 years 12 years she has had this problem sickness that would not go away it didn't matter what she tried she went to doctor after doctor she spent all her money and she did not even get better she got worse so physically she was in a mess oh god socially she could not associate with others she had no business even going in the midst of the crowd and touching jesus this is the state of humanity, people. They can't come around us because they are pulled aside in a corner trying to get help. And, and it will take the power of God to deliver and help those if we want to see them saved. If we want to see them come to our churches, it will take power. Oh God, the power of God so that the healing of God can address those needs that many people have even in the church. It will take the power of God. And the Bible says, he says, daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you whole. And even while he yet spake, there cometh one from the rule of the synagogue saying to him, telling the master, your daughter is dead. Not only is she dying, now she is dead. Don't trouble the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, fear not. Believe only and she shall be made whole. And when he came to the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the father of the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, weep not, she is not dead, she sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. She was dead. And he put her, them out, took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. Church of the living God, we need the power of God. We need the power of God. Death is something that carries so much, uh, you know, hurt and pain. My God. But I'm saying to us, ah, oh God, you know, even as in Lazarus' situation, some of these situations, God can use for his glory. 
God is still the resurrection and the life. God still has power over death, hell, and the grave. And my God, there are some situations that God will want us as his church to arise and be his hands and his mouth and his voice and the instrument which his power will flow so that the dead will rise even before our eyes. There are testimonies of this happening all over the world. We're just not seeing it in our space. But let me just wrap this up with Luke chapter 9. That was Luke 8. And we're going to continue again talking about this. Behold, I give you power. Because we cannot go out and do the work that God has given us to do without power. In Luke chapter 9, that was 8, he says, Then he called his 12 disciples together, and he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. The Bible says, And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither stairs, nor script, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece, and what Whatsoever house you enter into there abide and thence uh, depart and whosoever will not receive you when you go out into the city shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them verse number six and they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere and I'm saying to us if we have to preach this message of the kingdom, the Bible says, my goodness, and the apostles, when they were returned, told him all that had, they had done. He took them. He went aside privately into a desert place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. And the people, when they knew it, followed him. He received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing. I want to pause there for today. Jesus went out, he healed us sick, he raised the dead, he did all of that. And now Jesus has his disciples in Luke 9, he's not going. He now send them out and give them power to do just what he did. When you even look at Luke chapter 10, hear what the Bible says in Luke chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them out two by two. He told them the harvest is ripe and laborers are few. And he said to them, now the 70, heal the sick that are daring. Say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. My brothers and my sisters, we have work to do. We cannot go out to reap the harvest to save the lost, to deliver them if we don't function in the power that God has given to us. I pray that even as you hear this word, something will arise in you to say, God, that we already have the power if you have the Holy Ghost. Use me as an instrument to see people delivered, to see them set free, to see the dead raised, to see your kingdom advanced so that our preaching would not just be in, in enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of his Holy Ghost and power. This is all the time we have for living by the word. I want to encourage you to live the word, love the word, learn the word. Till next time, stay strong. God bless you. Bye-bye.